This book is a 10 out of 10, and I urge everyone to either read it or at least listen to this video. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Biblical Bookworm. My name is Elizabeth, and today I'll be talking about the book Humility of Heart by Father Gaetano da Bergamo. In his book, he explains why humility is the most important virtue, why pride is the deadliest of all sins, and how to become humble, and how to recognize humility or pride in oneself. Father Gaetano was born in Italy, he was a missionary, and lived in the 17th and 80th centuries. So let's start with what he has to say for us. Why is humility so important? In Matthew 18.3, Jesus says, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. We have to first understand what it means to be like children, because that's obviously what we have to do here. And what Jesus points out is that children are completely dependent of their parents and are absolutely unable to provide for themselves, and they know that. And so that symbolizes humility. So we have to be humble in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. And without that, it is impossible to become a saint, to enter heaven. And uh, Father Gaetano says that we have to differentiate between precepts and counsels in the Bible. So, for example, to be um, poor financially is of counsel. We don't have to. We can sell everything that we have, but we don't have to do that in order to enter heaven. But to be poor of heart, to be humble, is of precept. We have to do that, otherwise we will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Then there are two different types of humility. One is of counsel again, and the other one is of precept. The one of counsel, the one that is voluntary, is that we desire the contempt of others. That is not necessary to enter heaven. But what is necessary is to not esteem oneself above what we actually are. So we have to be aware of the fact that in front of God, we are nothing. As we've heard on Ash Wednesday, we are dust. And then there is another Bible passage, which is Matthew eleven twenty nine, where um, Jesus says, Learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. So the two properties that Jesus points out in himself are meekness and humility. So that is a strong sign that humility is really, really important. Apart from that, all virtues are acquired with humility and are lost with pride. Why is pride so dangerous? Or why is it even a problem? I mean, if we accomplish something good, we can be proud of it, can't we? Or we don't hurt anyone if we're proud, right? The problem with pride is it's considered to be the deadliest sin. And that's not because it's the gravest sin, but because of the fact that without humility, we cannot acquire any virtue that God does not hear the proud. And also, there is no sin without pride, according to St. Augustine. For example, if we take the very first sin of the universe, which was the sin of Lucifer, Lucifer he said, I will not serve, which is pride, clearly. And also in every other sin that we commit, that is a sin of pride because at least we disobey the commandments of God and we say that our will is more important than God's will and therefore that is pride. Father Gaetano also points out seven reasons why pride is so dangerous. The first one is that usually vices only destroy their opposite virtues, but pride destroys all virtues. You cannot have any virtues if you're proud. The second reason is that other vices are only to be feared when we are disposed to evil. As, so for example, if we, if we are okay with the fact that we are sinners, that's when other vices are to be feared. That's when we are likely to commit some sins. But, for, but the problem with pride is that it is that we should fear it even if we actually resolve to become saints. Even if we do good deeds, we still have to fear pride because we might become proud from our accomplishments. The third reason is that usually 
if we conquer some vice, we can rejoice over it. We can be happy um, about our accomplishment. But as soon as we rejoice about our acquired humility, we lose it. Then, pride is the first vice we learn and the last to leave the soul. So that's the last vice that would leave the soul before the person dies. God resists the proud in prayer. So if we ask for or if we are in need of any special grace, we will not receive that if, we, if our prayer is proud. Then pride is also the surest sign of the lost. And also it is extremely hard to recognize as it can even look like humility. Sometimes if we try to be humble, if we try to appear humble, that can actually be pride. Now, what is humility and what is its counterpart, vanity? Humility is about the recognition of reality, which means that if we are humble, we don't pretend something, but we actually just realize the truth. And vanity, according to the book, is everything that has an end. So if we glory in anything that is not ours or not even ours to keep, we are vain. An example of that would be if we glory in our wealth, we have to keep in mind that we could become poor at any moment. If we glory in our health, we could become sick at any moment. If we glory in our knowledge, we could become insane anytime. And if we glory in our holiness, we of course have to remember that we could fall into some grave sin at any given moment. And now some random facts about humility. God will help us in the measure that we are humble. Heavenly glory is proportionate to earthly humility. True patience is the proof of true humility. The best prayer is not the most recollected one, but the most humble one. And lastly, humility generates confidence. Now that we've talked about how incredibly important humility is, how do we actually implement that in our daily lives? How do we become humble? The first thing to note here is that as soon as we recognize our pride, that is the beginning of humility. And as soon as we rec think that we are humble, that is the beginning of pride. So the trick here is to always think that you are proud. And that is true because remember, humility is about the recognition of reality. So that has to be true that we are proud. And it is because if every sin, if there is no sin without pride and the just man commits seven sins a day, Every single person is proud as long as they live because they commit sins every day. Then we have to turn humiliations into humility. Father Gaetano says that um, a proud man could be humiliated and take that with pride because he might think that uh, or he might try to escape from that and um, suffer it with impatience. We should be grateful to the people who humiliate us because they actually fulfill God's plan in helping us to become saints. And then Father Gaetano also gives us advice on how to take compliments. He says that the humble man, if uh, praised, either thinks it's not true, so we have to make a short fact check if that what we are praised about is actually true about us, uh, or he fears it. And then he enumerates the sins of pride, which are the following. Presumption, ambition, envy, vainglory, which is the seeking of praise. I don't know how common that word in English is. Boastfulness, hypocrisy, disobedience, and discord. Now, I would like to talk about ambition in a bit more detail because I think it's not obvious how to practice that or what that means. Because if we think about what the opposite of ambition is that would be sloth and that is a vice again so the the ideal can't be to avoid ambition completely and to become lazy that can't be the the ideal and so what is ambition according to the book ambition is the inordinate desire to be honored and father gaetano has um, two solutions for us first we have to keep in mind that all our honor is not our merit but wholly the merit of God. And second, we should only desire honor as long as it helps our neighbor. 
So ambition in itself is not the problem. For example, Saint Maximilian Kolbe is known for um, that he said that he wants to be a saint and a great saint. So that would be ambition what we see here. But as long as he um, gave all the merit of his holiness to God, that is not a problem and not a sin. And also in the book there are pointed out the dangers of ambition and the problem is that first ambition oftentimes makes criminals of people who usually would not sin in any other sphere they for example live a chaste life they have no problem with gluttony but ambition is something that sneaks in and destroys everything and apart from that the problem with ambition is that people usually don't have scruples about it because like what's the problem in wanting to achieve something right Now let's get to my opinion on the book. As I've said at the beginning of the video, the book is a 10 out of 10. And although you might not feel comfortable reading it, because it's not a nice experience to read about one's own pride, it still is extremely helpful in our everyday life and in the, the recognition of pride in oneself. That's been it for today. See you next week. God bless and bye!